Hey, what's up, people? How are you doing? Hope everything is fine. Here's Spanish Grandmaster Pepe Cuenca to show you another uh, amazing game that happened in the US Championship a few days ago. It's not so common to see a 2600 player like Zerebu uh, strangling and killing that easily a 2800 like Fabiano Caruana. In this game, Fabiano had no option, and it's been uh, it was a, a really instructive game. So I enjoyed a lot analyzing it. So I, ho I hope you guys uh, do the same by watching it. So yeah, let's uh, start analyzing what happened in the 64 squares in this uh, amazing game played by Zerebu. So white player decided to go uh, for e4, and Fabiano replied with e5. Knight f3, knight c6, and bishop b5, we are in the Rui Lopez uh, Spanish variation, right? And probably Fabiano, given the fact that he's 200 points ahead uh, of a uh, white player, he decided not to go for the Berlin, and he went for the main line in Spanish a6. Now different options, the exchange variation taken on c6, um, bishop a4, the main line, knight f6, short castle, bishop e7, and at this point there are two main options. The one that said a book played, rook e1, defending e4, of course, and uh, the one that Peter Spiedler explains extremely well in Chess24 uh, video series, uh, d3. The idea is after d3, let's say b5, bishop b, b3, d6. The idea now is not to play with c3 and knight bd2, rook e1, knight f1, and knight g3, like in most of these lines in the Spanish. But instead, white plays a3 here. Now, given this square for the bishop, and later deciding to go for uh, knight c3 and knight d5 in, in, in many of the lines. So this is the idea. But, okay, Zerebuk played rook e1, b5, bishop b3, and d6. Now there is a, strategi a strategical threat. The threat is knight a5 that put win the bishop per d6 is necessary to play knight a5 because the pawn on e5 is hanging. So now you have to give the at square for the bishop. The natural way of giving this square is to play c3. Now you have the c2 square and then you want to go d4 in the future, just uh, winning some space in the center. So now short castle and before striking in the center with d4, you want to play a3 in order to stop bishop g4 coming because this pin could be extremely annoying in case you have played d4, right? Because there will be a lot of pressure in the center. And now many, many options here. So bishop b7, it's uh, one of the, the main options. Knight a5 followed by c5 and the Breyer, uh, knight b8 that Fabiano Caruana played. The idea is to relocate this knight on d7 where actually defends e5 as well and allows this pawn uh, uh, to go to c5 and this bishop will have an amazing view from here from b7 putting some pressure on the e4 pawn as well. So knight b8 was played by Fabiano Caruana and now d4. Once this knight has gone back then it's even more natural to, to strike in the center with d4. Knight bd7, black should uh, keep the tension in the center. If you, if you go e takes d4, then white will enjoy a nice center. And the extra option of going later, knight c3. So knight bd2 was played and um, bishop b7. And at this point, I would like to draw your attention because I would like to explain a few things here in this position. So normally you want to go knight f1, knight g3, because the bishop here is extremely sad. Hasn't got uh, many beautiful uh, prospects if you don't remove this knight from d2. But in order to uh, remove this knight, to, 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 to relocate this knight to g3, you have to defend the e4 pawn, right? Because uh, there are two pieces attacking it. So that's why bishop c2 is played in these positions. Uh, in order to defend e4, and now in the next move, you want to go knight f1 and knight g3. Fabiano played rook e8. All this is theory, but it's always good to, to try to explain a few things from the theoretical moves. Now this bishop on e7 was extremely sad as well. It, uh, and then you want to go bishop f8 g6 and bishop g7, right? And with this rook on e8, you put some uh, extra pressure on the e4 pawn. Knight f1 was played, bishop f8, knight g3. Now, uh, before here, after bishop f8, black was threatening to go e takes d4 because uh, the, the pawn now on e4 would be hanging. So knight g3 defend this guy, aiming to jump in many positions to f5. So g6 is played, controlling f5 and giving this uh, bishop a square on g7. And now a4, just trying to create some troubles as well on the queen side. c5 and uh, d5. White could uh, keep the tension on the center, but it's nice to close in the center here with d5. Now you cut all the action from this guy on b7, and then you try to focus your game on the key, on the on the king side where you want to try to create some troubles to black king, right? 
c4, another uh, natural move to give now the c5 square to this knight, where this actually uh, put some pressure on e4, uh, put an eye on d3, on b3, and on a4, all these important squares. Bishop d5 was played, uh, white's idea is very simple. You want to go queen d2. Let's say if, if black plays uh, bishop g7, you want to go queen d2, then this bishop is never is, is, is never going to be removed from g5, right? And maybe you want to go knight h2, knight g4, and increase a lot the pressure on f6. Let's say maybe rook f1 and f4. And uh, it's not easy for black to, to remove this pressure from this pin. So that's why uh, after bishop g5, h6 is played. So kicking this bishop back, and then you play bishop e3, knight c5, and then queen d2. Maybe if you run and gin, it suggests uh, many times bishop takes c5. I don't like this move, right? Because you give the bishop pair and then this pass pawn is going to be uh, easily blo blocked, right? By a bishop on d6 or even by a knight on d6 uh, by e8, right? So king d2, uh, queen d2 was played by Zerebu, and then uh, you are attacking the h6 pawn. You have to do something about this. h5 was played. If you play king h7, then maybe there's this nice maneuver, knight h2. The idea is to continue with knight g2. And if you force, if you force black to exchange on g4, then you have, white is going to enjoy an extremely beautiful file on h in order to put a lot of pressure on the h6 pawn, right? So that's why uh, after queen d2, h5 was played, um, bishop g5, we're still in theory, 20 moves. And here is where Fabiano Car Caruana deviates from the main line. The main line continues bishop e7. And uh, in these positions, white has tried, for example, rook a3 in order to continue with rook e a1 in order to uh, create blacks and troubles on the queen side, on the a file. But after bishop g5, Fabiano Caruana played bishop g7. And uh, this is another natural move because uh, you protect uh, the f6 knight, right? And at this point, only 10 games in my database. And knight h4 was played in few games, uh, another moves. Uh, but in this moment, Zerebu plays a novelty, rook f1. On the other hand, it's a really natural move because white plan is just to strike on the center in good conditions with f4, with Facundo, right? And then try to create some troubles to... To, to black's position over there on the king on the king side, queen c7 was played and bishop h6 another natural move trying to eliminate one of the defenders of the king side. Let's say if you continue with knight f d7, then you are gonna regret that so many of your pieces are uh, pretty far from the black skin, right? Now, for example, if you take on g7, bishop takes e7, king takes e7, and knight h4, another natural uh, maneuver, uh, putting uh, an eye on f5, actually black's position is extremely hard now because you want to go knight f5 and queen g5 or queen g6, and now it's uh, extremely hard to defend from, from, from this maneuver, and uh, probably black is losing already. I don't know how, how to defend from, from this knight f5 and queen h6 or queen g5, so that's why Fabiano Caruana, with good criteria, decided to keep this bishop on the board by playing bishop h8. Uh, keeping this bishop on the board, you actually keep more pieces defending your king, right? And after bishop h8, knight g5 was played. The idea is, of course, to give free action to this pawn to Facundo on the f-file. Knight h7 was played. Takes, takes, and you want to go f4. But in order to do this, you first have to remove this bishop because it's hanging on h6. So that's why bishop e3 was played. And now white intends to play f4. And at this point, maybe it's the first and an accuracy for uh, Fabiano Caruana. It's not that easy to play f4 here. For example, let's say if you play bishop g7, for example, just improving a little bit the, the position of this bishop, f4 is not that easy to play. Because now you can take on f4, bishop takes f4, and now h4 is uh, the key since whenever you remove this knight to h1 then the e4 pawn is hanging so it was not that easy to strike it with f4 but after the move that caravana played queen e7 it's actually possible and maybe you could ask me pepe what are you talking about stop the nonsense stop the bullshit now if you play f4 then e4 is even more attacked right but the thing is, after f4, e takes f4, bishop takes f4, now h4 is actually not possible. Because there is bishop g5 attacking the queen on e7, and then the h4 pawn is, is going to fall. 
So that's why now uh, maybe Caruana uh, was regretting a little bit this move, queen e7, and he uh, instead went king g8, protecting the weakest pawn on the position f7. And uh, from this point, actually start uh, uh, white start strangling Fabiano Caruana and actually gives him no option. He goes rook f3. Okay, one of the uh, good things for black after uh, white has played f4 is the e5 square is now extremely weak, right? So it would be extremely great to, to install there a knight, for example, on e5, right? Because it controls a lot of important squares, d3, f3, etc. Also uh, blockades the e4 pawn, so now there's not going to be e5 and this bishop is never going to enjoy a beautiful diagonal and more important protects f7. But there's actually no, uh, no, no time for this because after knight d7, rook a f1, knight e5, you can actually take on e5, takes, takes on f7, takes everything and now beautiful maneuver knight e2. This knight is going to come to d4 where it actually can jump to e6 on, or c6 and white is much better. Let's just try to give an, uh, an example. So bishop uh, king g7, knight d4 uh, trying to, to jump to e6 so you cover with c8, knight c6 now you want to take on e5, bishop d7 takes, takes, and queen f2, and you see here that the dark squares are extremely weak, you're gonna enter on b6 or a7, and then d6 and a6 are extremely weak, so white is just much, 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 much better. So rook f3, bishop g7 was played, and rook a f1, and knight d7 was played, in order to go 95, maybe in the future, and bishop h6. And at this point, there are so many tactical shots for white here. Uh, so you could say, Pepe, why did I go from f4? Now e5 is actually not covered. Because there is after 95, there is a boom. Yes, knight f5 here, just winning the game on the spot. Because you attack the queen, and if g takes, uh, sorry, if knight f4, uh, you take the rook first, and f3, rook takes f3, and g takes f5, then rook g3 actually wins the game on the spot. So after bishop h6, the threat is to go knight f5, so that's why Fabiano Caruana took on h6, bishop, uh, queen takes h6, and uh, now there is another threat. If you go knight e5, there is knight h5, another huge baboom, right? Um, threatening the mate on g7, aiming to go knight f6, and if you open the g-file, just rook g3, that will, will win the game. So that's why Queen f8 was uh, was played by Fabiano Caruana, and at this point, a uh, white player decided to come back to d2, keeping a lot of pressure in the position, but there was even a, uh, a better combination, knight f5 here. Of course, you can never take on g5, and if you could play knight a5, white can, white can play rook g3, and let's say queen h6, knight h6, if you go mm, king g7, there is knight f5, uh, and knight d6 later, and if you go king f8, there is a beautiful blow here, boom, rook g6. The idea is, of course, if you take on g6, then it's rook f7 checkmate, um, and then it's gone, right? So after queen f8, knight f5 was even stronger, but queen d2 was played, and uh, knight e5, rook f6, and look at this pawn on d6, extremely weak, so this queen, it's actually uh, has to put, an eye, to put an eye on d6. That's why black played rook a d8 in order to free this queen. So now uh, it can um, it can work in defensive defensive tasks. White's idea is very simple. He goes queen g5 and threats uh, to take on uh, to take on uh, on h5. So that's why queen g7 was played. So knight h5 is not possible. And bishop d1. Look at how uh, all white pieces are looking to the black king. And now uh, bishop h5 is going to be an idea that actually uh, appears in this position as well. And this king on g8 looks like has less future than a shop of Spanish uh, Iberic ham in the center of La Meca. Who's gonna buy that? Who's gonna buy this king on g8? Nobody gives a, a, an euro for this. And look at how uh, white prepares the sacrifice on h5. Fabiano plays bishop c8, covering some important squares, the f5 in case white take on h5, then later uh, this f5 is going to be extremely tasty for this uh, knight on g3, right? And uh, Zerebu plays queen h4, now preparing this sacrifice on h5. At this point, Fabiano Caruana plays, uh, maybe not so natural for, for you guys, uh, king f8, because not for you, not for me, maybe, 
because uh, you see uh, a lot of action going on on the f file but it's a prophylactic uh, move against the sacrifice on h5 because if you play now uh, bishop h5 and uh, now you are gonna regret it right what's the idea of black now probably you have seen at home many of you but the thing is uh, there is a rat -a -da -da, boom g5 here and then the queen cannot escape actually from h4 right so that's why after king h8 you're gonna take on uh, h5 but uh, zerebu prepares for this and play queen f4 and now this queen is gone is never gonna be trapped on h4 right so king g king g queen g8 was played look at uh, this queen and the king all the pieces on the background so something has gone wrong for sure king h1 was played uh, with the khan right you are enjoying uh, a lot of uh, advantage so Improve the pieces of your, improve the safety of your king a little bit. Rook e7, and now bishop h5 here. The thing is, you're gonna take on h5 because after knight h5, there are many many threats. But one of the one of them is actually pretty simple. You wanna go queen h6, and you wanna remove the rook from the f file, giving this square for the knight. Let's say knight g6, queen h6 check, king e8, and remove this rook. Let's say to f3, and now actually knight f6 is actually. A huge uh, blow and then black has to resign here so after bishop h5 caruana cannot take actually on on h5 and he took on b4 on a4 sorry bishop d1 with the khan now uh, with the extra option of taking just an a4 so queen g7 was played let's try to analyze what happens if black uh, tries to create some contemplate with the rook b7 takes rook b2 and then the simple queen g5 and then you see now that this is actually extremely weak this rook cannot move to d7 and now the idea is actually very simple you want to take on g6 and capture this rook on d8 and black cannot do actually anything about this so bishop d1 queen g7 was played bishop takes a4 already a pawn up but still uh, not that clear queen h7 and now black's idea is just to play king g7 and queen h6 let's say if you play bishop c2 for example here king g7 with the idea of going queen h6 to exchange queens then black could actually try to survive this position this endgame because then there is a lot of pressure on b2 but look at how uh, zerebut starts putting his cream on caruana's back right let's say come with daddy come with daddy you're gonna enjoy this massage just come with daddy and relax papi so uh, after Queen h7, uh, Zerebu played queen g5 with the idea if, of if king g7 there is rook takes g6 now and the rook on e7 is hanging. So that's why after queen g5, a5 was played, Blood cannot even move his pieces. Bishop g7 is not possible because rook takes g6. And now king g1, remove this king now from the h file where could be some sacrifices there. Queen h8 and rook 1 to f4 introducing the idea of going rook to the h file and then yeah it's not gonna be a, a good business for black queen g7 was played rook h4 and knight d3 maybe trying to create some contemplate uh, attacking the b2 pawn but it's too late now look at how uh, zerebut finishes the game he plays rook h6 the idea is extremely simple you cannot actually uh, take on b2 because the threat is to go rook h takes uh, g6 right so that's why black uh, has to go back to to e5 with this knight in order to defend this pawn on g6 and now rook f4 was played white idea is extremely simple you want to go queen h4 and threatens uh, rook h8 and you remove the rook to f4 because this queen is gonna put an eye on those rooks so whenever you go queen h4 if you want to go king h g8 sorry these rooks are gonna be hanging and actually black cannot do anything about this after rook f4 bishop d7 queen h4 threatens mate on on h8 king g8 and now give me give me that rook to me baby it's so tasty bocata di cardinale and uh, Queen e7, rook e8, queen g5, um, bishop takes a4, rook f6, and uh, black resign because d6 is actually not possible to defend. If you play rook d8, and then rook takes d6, sorry, followed by queen takes d8, it's actually just winning the game. So, an amazing game by Verebu, a strange name to pronounce for a Spanish guy, uh, Jaroslav Zerebu. 
And uh, it's not common to see uh, Fabiano Caruana losing in this style. I mean, it's been uh, really uh, a massage, a massage from Whites. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this game because, I mean, I did it a lot. And I mean, it's been a massage. I cannot say anything else. So, guys, be good and see you in the next time uh, in another video. Bye bye and take care. See you.